Well, just like we do every Wednesday morning, we are on the Health Watch talking about all the topics that are trending in the medical world. And once again, joining me this morning, Dr. Saeed Hussein of Trinity Health of New England. I don't think I put my microphone on. We're talking about stroke. While sure. I don't put my mic on, we're seeing them more and more in people in the four, age 45 to 64 age range. What's behind that? Yeah, this is concerning, Tim. Remember, um, stroke is the fifth leading cause of death in the U.S. And um, CDC recently put out a report um, looking at uh, uh, mortality from stroke in the age group of 45 to 64. And it has gone up from 2012 to 2019, 7%. Mm -hmm. But during the course of the pandemic, especially, especially the early years, it went up more than 15%. Um, and it's concerning for a number of reasons. One, because folks in this age group typically don't necessarily know what to look for or may not take stroke symptoms seriously. Right. And then those annual checkups and, and doctor visits that I've already always spoken about are extremely important. Yes. Um, and so all of those things um, together, you know, we hope to bend the curve. Mm -hmm. But um, there is there is work to be done. Oh, for people who don't know what stroke is, I mean, is it oversimplifying it just to think of it as like a heart attack that's happening in your brain? And are there yeah. commonalities in those the risk factors? Yeah. So ba thanks for asking that. So there are two types of strokes. One is a clot, which basically means there's no blood going to the brain, and the other is a bleed. Mm -hmm. uh, clot uh, strokes from a clot are more common. Risk factors for developing a stroke include high blood pressure, obesity, right. high cholesterol, smoking, alcohol use, um, so it's diabetes. So it's really, really important that we take care of those risk factors that I spoke about. But one thing that the CDC report does shed some light on, which is not a surprise to him, but I do want to mention to viewers, is disparities in health care. So in this age group, for instance, mm -hmm. the rate of death um, in black uh, people is 133% higher than white people, so as opposed to senior population, 65 and above, where it's only 22% higher. So it's much higher in this in this age group, which means we have to do more from a healthcare perspective yeah. in terms of increasing and enhancing access to care. Now, a lot of those risk factors that you just mentioned, I feel like are risk factors for a lot of different diseases that people know about and therefore should hopefully be guarding against. But at the same time, if these numbers are going up, doesn't look like that's the case. That's kind of depressing. That's right. So bottom line here is, if in doubt, seek medical help out immediately because stroke is a medical emergency. So calling 911 is the right thing to do. What are some symptoms you should be aware of? Yes, please. Worst headache of your life. Right. If there's numbness or weakness in your arms or legs or face, mm. or if you have difficulty speaking, for instance, or understanding speech, these are all warning signs and, and possible symptoms of uh, stroke. And my understanding is, especially if they come on quickly, Absolutely. not just slowly, but if it happens like out of nowhere, like a clap of thunder, and now you've got that problem. Absolutely. Yeah. And one thing, if you can take a take home message it would be to set up that appointment with your doctor yes it's really really important that we monitor all these risk factors because there are amazing medications out there the things we can do from a lifestyle modification right. perspective as well to bend this curve okay now on to something that I haven't heard of before it's called the slapped cheek virus and you'll see in pictures why it's called that uh, but we know it as parvovirus which to me when I heard that the first thing I thought of I thought that happened in dogs it's you know what they commonly call parvo, but I guess this is, there's a human form of this virus too, and we're starting to see more and more of that. What's going on? Yeah, the parvovirus B19, uh, to be specific, uh, Tim, has been around for a long time. It's called slap cheek uh, fever because of the way the rash presents, typically seen in children, um, yep. and we'll see probably an uptick in cases as children go back to school. And usually mild symptoms, um, uh, fever, rash, okay. uh, fatigue, um, myalgias, which is body aches. Yeah. However, two groups of people that need to be uh, a little bit more careful about are pregnant people, uh, mm. pregnant women, um, because it can lead to miscarriages, and also those that are immunocompromised because they can have more severe manifestations. It's a respiratory illness, yeah. so things that we, uh, precautions that we took during the pandemic would apply for instance, to this virus as well, to keep it at bay. Right, just uh, if you need to do masking or anything like that. And just hygiene. Your distance. Yep. Other than that, outside of those risk groups, though, more or less, it should just be, okay, you get over it and you move on? Yeah, actually 50% of people up to the age of 20 have had parvovirus mm -hmm. at some point. Like I said, a majority of cases are mild yeah. or asymptomatic, but um, some, some people do develop 
more severe symptoms. There you go. Okay, hopefully you've learned a little bit about stroke and about uh, the slap cheek virus, parvovirus. Doctor, thank you so much. Thank you. He always joins us every Wednesday and sometimes on Fridays too. Uh, when uh, Whenever we need some expertise, he is right there for us. Erica, let's send it back to you.